Oh, Father God, there is none like you. There is none like you. A God who overshadows us. A God who sees us through. A God who enables us. A God who is always with us. 24-7. A God who always knows our needs. A God who always provides for our needs. Even though when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even though we need to cross. Cross the storms of life. Father God, you're always a God who is there. You're a God who always enables us. Because in you, we can do all things. In you, there is nothing called impossible. In you, there is always a hope and a future. And in you, we know that we can have a better tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God a big applause. And those of you in the Facebook, give me a big clap, emoji clap. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, worship team. And uh, I see faith first time. Faith. Wow, big girl. The daughter of... Uh, Pastor Andrew and uh, Liza. First time on stage. That was beautiful. I'm going to interpret my own sermon today. <laughs> uh, Pastor Fuyun has been, uh, has been to a place whereby they suspected, a place whereby they suspected to have a cluster of, of that thing. And... Uh, so she has she told me that she better just stay back and uh, 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 just does, doesn't want to take any kind of risk. So what we are going to do is that we are going to have an English sermon, and then uh, she will she will do the interpretation and be posted up in the Facebook by tomorrow in Chinese. All right. So we are going to have the English. Merry Christmas, everyone. And especially those in the Facebook right now, Merry Christmas to you. You you can type Merry Christmas back to me and see how many Merry Christmases there are. I want to share with you today on this topic, selling through the storm. Selling through the storm. This Christmas is going to be very different, like our MCs, our two ladies were saying. We never had a Christmas like this ever before. And this year has not been an easy year. Someone was just asking me in the past week, Pastor, you're the pastor. What is happening in the world? I said, that is very interesting. I said, you should listen to my sermon. (laughs) What is happening in the world? I said, in short, God wants to teach us a lesson. Not a bad lesson, a good lesson. God wants to teach us that we can do all things in Him, in Christ Jesus, who strengthened us. God wants to teach us this lesson. We can do all things in Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We quote this verse very often. I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. I can do all things. And whenever we face, we face a situation, we quote it. Whenever we face another situation, we would quote it. But most of the time, we misunderstood this verse. Most of the time, we miss out the true meaning of this verse. Now let's come back to life. 
Let's come back to real life. You see, there are some struggles in life that are unavoidable. Whoever you are, no matter what you're doing, no matter how gifted, how talented you are, there are some struggles in your life. There are some struggles in my life that cannot be avoided. Struggles in life or storms of life will always be there. And whether you like it or not, sometimes it is God who allows them to be there for our own good. Just because we are facing a pandemic throughout the year, the whole world is facing a pandemic, it does not mean that God is not in control. It does not mean that God doesn't know. It does not mean that God doesn't understand. I believe, and I truly believe, one of my sermons I was talking about, that God would use war, natural disaster, and pestilence to teach us something that He wants us to understand. And God allows it to be there because sometimes we come to the stage whereby we take things for granted. We come to a stage whereby we think we can do without God. Oh, who is God? I can do well without Him. Look at that, I found my job without Him. Look at that, I found my wife without Him. Look at that, I can have as many children as I want to if we don't stop at two. My parents stopped at eight. They could have another eight more. Elder James' parents stopped at 15. They could have another 15 more. I'm glad they stopped at 15. You see, sometimes, especially when we are doing well, we begin to think that we are the ones who rule the world. We begin to think we are the one who commands the world. We, are, we, we begin to think we are the one who controls the world, controls our, our environment. We have forgotten that we don't even know that we will wake up alive tomorrow morning because our breath, our life is not in our hands. Let me start off by saying that when God gives us trouble, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5 that even the Son of God had got to learn obedience through what? Through suffering. Even the Son of God his own son, Jesus Christ, had got to learn obedience, not through good times, not through well times and great times, abundant times and prospering times, through suffering. That's the reality. The key word is learn. Say after me, learn. Those of you on the Facebook, type, learn. Type down, let us learn. There's a key word for today. I'd like to bring back, bring you back to a story in Mark chapter 6. In Mark chapter 6, there was a story about Jesus feeding the 5,000. There was a big group of people. They were hungry. Jesus said, get me some food. They said, only, we have only uh, five loaves and two fish, two fishes. So the story went on that Jesus set them out, set, have the disciples to arrange them in groups. 
Jesus broke the fish, broke the bread, fed the 5,000. The disciples were very busy. After feeding the 5,000, Jesus said to the disciples, there you are. Each one of you, 12 of you, pick up a basket each. 12 of you, 12 baskets. Pick up all the leftovers, not the crumbs. The crumbs is what you just throw away from the table. No, there are still pieces of bread, pieces of fish. They couldn't finish. Pick up all those pieces. They pick up 12 baskets. That was the background of the story. After they've done that, they might have felt satisfied. Wow, what a long day, good day. Oh, it's so exciting to be with Jesus. You know, you think working with your pastor is difficult? Oh, pastor want this last minute. Pastor want that last minute. This morning, pastor called. He want this last minute. Jesus had 5,000. It was a last minute. Feed them. Am I right? At least I didn't do that. Someone is laughing. But nevertheless, they had a whole day, long day. Then Jesus said, Hey, people, the day is not done yet. Get on the boat. Put up the text. I'm not going to read because of time. I'm enjoying myself today. <laughs> you, you can see that. <laughs> Get on a boat. Row the boat. Go to the other side, Bethesda. The Bible continues to say that as they row, as they were in the middle of the sea, the wind came. The storm came. See, Jesus said, it's not over yet. Get in the boat. Start rolling over to the other side. They were thinking that, hey, Jesus, we are human, you know. It's a long day. We look after 5,000, fed the 5,000, pick up the leftovers. Now, on the boat. Now, roll over the other side. Worse still, we are meeting a storm. If I were to meet a storm when I am fit, when, I'm, when I meet a storm, when I am ready, when I meet a storm, when I am healthy and I have enough rest, when I'm prepared, I can take on any storm. But look, I'm tired. We are tired. We need rest. We need a break. We need a holiday. And then come a storm. We are not prepared. Already we were not prepared to feed the 5,000. Now we are not prepared for the storm. The disciples were going through this process whereby they were caught unaware. When they were out in the sea, the storm came. Where was Jesus? The Bible says Jesus was not with them. Jesus was out in the mountain. He was praying. Hear this. Never get yourself caught out there alone without Jesus. Your enemy will kick up a storm for you. Never get caught out there alone without Jesus. Your enemy will kick up a storm for you. And that was what happened. 
Jesus was praying out there. Now, doesn't Jesus know that the disciples were out there? Of course He knew. He was the one who sent them out. Doesn't Jesus, doesn't Jesus want to do something? Wouldn't He care? Wouldn't He have a plan B? You see, when we are caught in a storm, what do we normally want God to do? We always think that, oh God, if you would just change the situation. Oh God, if you would change our environment. If it would change what we are going through. That's what we want to do. We always want Jesus to change our environment. But Jesus had another plan. He wants to change our lives. He wants to change our lives. You see, Jesus was there praying up the mountain. Disciples were there in the storm. Jesus knew it. He knew it. He could easily, he could have from the mountain just say, storm, quiet down, be gone. It would be quiet. It has been done before. Remember the servant of the centurion that was paralyzed? And this centurion went to Jesus and begged Jesus, Jesus, my servant is paralyzed. And Jesus said, okay, I will come to your home. But the centurion said, no, 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 Jesus, don't come to my home. Because I'm not worthy for you to come to my home. Jesus, all you can do, I know that you can say a word from where you are. You don't have got to be there. Say a word from where you are. He's, he will be healed. Say a word from where you are. The storm will be calm. Jesus could have done that. Am I right? But Jesus didn't. You see, sometimes the storms in our life gets, get messy. So messy that we begin to get out of our minds. We not only have headaches, we begin to get stressed up. We begin, we begin to get nervous breakdown. We don't understand. After this, so tired, I will row the boat. So tired, I will meet the storm. And Jesus is nowhere to be found. And we are going to drown. We are going to, be, we are going to go under. We are going to die. We are, yeah, all the negative thoughts begin to come in. And that's what happened to some of us today during this year. So many things we have been caught by this pandemic, unprepared. No one was prepared. Even today, we are talking about the vaccine, vaccine, we are still talking. No one is prepared. And some are facing storm after storm. God, what is happening? Now, the, we are not prepared. Now we are pandemic. And during this time, I lost my job. And I lost my job. I was talking to a friend. He promised me a job. And the last minute, he said no. Disappointment of the disappointment. And then someone knocked into my car. Come on, God, what is happening? And then somebody broke into my house. Hey, one of the another. I'm struggling. I don't know where I'm going. Your words say, I can do all things in Christ to strengthen me. What can I do now? Look at what is happening. One thing after another. What can I do to get out of this situation? God, if only I would get out of this situation. Hear this. Don't try to get out of this situation without learning a lesson. 
Don't try to get out of this situation without learning a lesson. Things have gone so bad that sometimes we just give up. I want you to hear this, whether you are here or in Facebook. Hear this well. I am not denying that you are going through a storm, that we are going through a storm. I'm not denying that. But don't let the storm get into your system and your head. When the storm gets into your system and your head, you begin to give up. You begin to stress. You begin to depress. And you begin to break down. Every storm has a lifespan. Hello? Yes, it's true. Especially I as a pastor, people ask me, Pastor, what is God doing? Where is God? What is God doing? What is this pandemic? We pray, we pray, we pray. It's not so much of praying. It's about what have we learned. If God wants us to go through this storm, there must be a lesson. Yeah. Yes, the, the enemy may say, like the psalmist was saying that, you know what, I have been going through so many turbulences, so many trials, struggles. I've been going through and through and through. Even the enemies begin to question. My tears, the psalmist said, my tears has been my food day and night. And the enemies were saying, they were always asking and saying, hey, 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 where is your God? Prove to me, where is your God? That's what the psalmist is saying. And sometimes we believers begin to feel as if we don't, have, we don't have an answer. As if the enemy has an upper hand on our lives. When you begin to break down, yes, your enemy has an upper hand on your life. Why? Because we don't understand. We don't understand. What is going on? You see, God has been good. And we have learned a lot of good things. We have learned a lot of good things. We have learned how to live in plenty, in blessing, and that's what we have been taught. So very often, when we talk about God, we talk about blessing, abundance. We talk about prosperity, we talk about wellness, we talk about health, we talk about healing, deliverance. Whenever we talk about God, we are talking about, oh God, you are going to make me better, make me better. The purpose of God as if is to make me better. The purpose of God as if is to make me what I want to be. That is our prayer. That is what we've been taught. Anything wrong? Nothing wrong with that. But it's only half the truth. Say half the truth. Okay, type half the truth. There's only half the truth. Yes, it's true. We learn how to live well, we learn abundance because there's the promise of God. We learn about blessings, prosperity because there's the promises of God. But we have got to learn also how to fight through the storms of life. So a lot of believers can do well, will do well, and are doing well when everything is well. Of course, when everything is well, you can do well. But question, can you do well when everything is not well?
we had an ex school meeting just in the past week, the executive committee of the church. And uh, we were talking about life. We were saying that, you know what? We have been through hard times in life. Hard times in life whereby we had nothing, only bare hands. But we were so willing to work, so willing to dirty our hands, so willing to put our hands into hard work, so willing to sweat. We have gone through all that. But we cannot really say about today's generation because we have raised them in a very comfortable way. They have been raised with the understanding that we are going to live in abundance, in wellness. Things are provided. Things ought to be provided. No. Reality is they wouldn't, do, they wouldn't know what to do when storm hits them. You know, the storm that hits us today, the storm that hits us today, 2020, it's a big storm. So big a storm that we can't even celebrate Christmas properly. And I want to tell you something. This storm hits everybody, including your pastor. No one is ex ex exempted. Look at the boat. Who were in the boat? There was this disciple called Peter, the great one, supposed to be the best one. Peter, supposed to be the one that's bold, courageous, full of faith, jump into the water for Jesus. He has forgotten that that was not his assignment. There was Peter. Along with, the, with Peter in the same boat was the other disciples called Judas, who was the one who plot against Jesus. Whether you're good or evil, you're in the same boat. In the same boat, there was John. The Bible says, the disciple that Jesus loved. John! Jesus loved the most. John! 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 Favorite disciple. John! And along in the same boat was Matthew, the tax collector, the sinner. Whoever you are, male or female, old or young, rich or poor, whether you're from here or from there, we are, we are all in the same boat. And it's not easy. But let me tell you something. My time is running out in seven minutes. I've yet to... I'll try to finish in ten minutes. Okay. Let me tell you something. God will always leave something good, something good in every storm that you struggle. There's always a silver lining. There's always a silver lining in every cloud. God will leave something good. The disciples may say, Jesus, look, it's frightening to be in a storm and we are tired. It's one thing after another. But Jesus said, hang on, I have left something good. Let's go back to Philippians chapter 4 where I started. When I read, I can do all things in Christ who strengthened me. In Philippians chapter 4, 
Verse 8. We read a little bit earlier, verse 8. Paul said in verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things that are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, if there is any virtue, anything good, anything true, praiseworthy, Paul said, meditate on these things. In other words, Paul said, hey, think about it. You may not have it in your life, but have it in your head. This is a beginning. Like I say, don't let this storm overtake the soundness of your mind. Don't let this storm discourage the strategy in your mind, the clarity in your mind. Whatever that is true, noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtue, praiseworthy, meditate, have it in your mind. And then the next verse, it says, all things, in verse 9, the things which you learn, the things which you receive, the things which you heard, the things which you saw in me, Paul said, do. Say do. Facebook type do. Do. The problem is that not that we, don't learn, we have not learned, not that we have not received, not that we have not heard, not that we have not seen. We have, it, have them all, but we don't do. You want to achieve anything, it is doing that is the beginning of it. Without doing, nothing will work. As you go through the storms, ask yourself, what have you learned? Ask yourself, what have you seen? Do. These are very practical. This is down to earth. Step one, two, three. Step A, B, C. Do. And in verse 11, Paul continued to say in verse 11, not that I speak in regard to need. I don't speak because I have got need. Yes, it's true, I have needs. Paul has his problems too. Paul had his storms too. He has his needs too. Paul said, it, it is not because of need, but I have got something else to say. For I, Paul said, I have learned. Have you learned? You have learned. But Paul said, I also have learned, but something I learned is, is unique. And that is in whatever state, situation, circumstance that I'm in, I learn to be content. I learn to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound, whether I'm in lack or I have plenty. I have learned to adjust myself. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Paul said, I learned. I have learned to be content. Content is, to be content is the satisfaction. It's a state of satisfaction and at peace in the process or with the process or while going through the process. While you're going through it, you are satisfied with it. You're going through it, you are at peace with it. I know it is not what I wanted, but I'm at peace with it. I know it is not as good as what I expected, but I am at peace with it. I know that is not what it is. It is, it is just so hurtful, so painful, but yes, I am at peace with it because I am at peace with it. I can do all things. 
That's why the next verse, the next verse it says that, that I can do all things in Christ. Because look, the God, the God who orders blessing in our lives, the God who orders blessings in our lives is the same God that orders the storms in our lives. The God who blesses us is the same God who disciplines us. The God who blesses us is the same God who teaches us. Who told you that life had got to please you? You see, sometimes we get very angry with people. I'm angry with you because you didn't make me happy. Who told you that people ought to make you happy? You make yourself happy. Hello? Who told you that? Who told you that I am here to make you happy? I can't make you happy. I can make you happy today, but I can't make you happy every day. Even your wife can make you happy every day. Am I right, pro? There's my good friend. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Even your husband can make you happy every day, except me making my wife happy every day. All those, all those in the Facebook, give me an emoji, love. <laughs> you see, God said, if you, out of what you have seen and heard, out of what you have received, you have learned. And if you do what you have learned, that's mean to be contented. Then you can say, I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. It doesn't matter to me how many people sit in this auditorium today. Even if there was no one sitting here, I'd be still preaching the way I do. I still be contented because I can preach. I can teach. I can relate. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Sailing through the storm is about learning how to be contented where you are. Be thankful as you are. How to move on with what you have. And God will be there for your breakthrough. Let me just conclude by going back to the story. In Mark chapter 6, just take five minutes and I'll finish here. In Mark chapter 6, there was this verse. In verse 52, the Bible says that when Jesus got into the boat, the storm stopped. And the Bible says they were so astonished. They were so, so amazed. They marveled. Oh, oh. That was what happened. But in verse 52, that was in verse 51. 52, it says, why did they marvel? Why did they, why did they say, oh? Why did they do that? It was all because they had not understood 
that had not understood or gained any insight about the loaves. Remember, before they got into the boat, just a few hours before, they had the loaves and the fish. Just a few hours before they got into the boat and met the storm, they collected 12 baskets full of loaves and fish. Let me give you a question. Type it down in your, uh, those in your Facebook. You got it right, I give you a Christmas present. Are you ready? Where are the 12 baskets of leftovers? I'm not going to give you the answer. Okay. Before that, they collected. And now, the Bible says they had forgotten what had happened. If you look at Mark, Mark was full of miracles, signs and wonders. From chapter 1, he says that Jesus' teaching was full of authority to cast out demons. And in chapter 2, there was a healing of the paralytic. Chapter 2, the healing. And in uh, and, uh, and chapter 3, there was a healing again. And there were a lot of miracles. Chapter 3, again, the disciples were giving authority to cast out spirits. And chapter 4, there was, there was the stories about the stories about the seed, about the kingdom. There was a great teaching in chapter 4. In chapter 5, there, again, there was there were deliverance, and again, there were healings, and miracles, and after miracles, Jairus' daughter was healed, and the woman of the, with the flow of blood was healed. Chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, a lot of miracles. Miracles, miracles, miracles. Chapter 6 is again Miracles is a miracle breaking of the, of the five loaves and the two fish. Hey, disciples, with all these miracles going on, chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until now, haven't you learned anything? Haven't you understood if God had done it before, He can do it today? Do not forget. Do not forget the days of your miracles. Many of you, you have testified. I thank God for your testimonies. Those were the days of your miracles. Never forget the days of your miracle. Remember the way that God saved you when you were nobody. Remember the day whereby God touched you when you were calling out to Him. Remember when you were going through sickness, tumor, cancer, whatever sickness that you, you were in at one time, and God brought healing, miraculous healing, and you were testifying to His and praise to God. Remember at one time when you did not have any money, and God gave you money. Remember at one time you had nobody, and all of a sudden God brought a new friend to you. Miracles after miracles, intervention after intervention, testimony after testimonies. Never forget the hands that fed you. Never forget the hands of God that healed you, that provided for you. If God had done it before, He would do it today. Yes, it's true. You and I, we are going through the storm of life. It is not a short storm. It's a long storm. It affected our everything. Oh, I want to hear every son and every daughter of God say, I can do it. If you're in the Facebook, type, I can do it. Type as many times as you can. I can do it. Everyone type it. I can do it. I want to hear every son, every daughter of God say, I can do it. Yes, God, it is painful this year. It has been painful this year, but I can do it. Yeah. Yet it hurts, but I can do it. I don't have what I had, but I can do it. I'm missing out opportunities, but I can do it. I've lost my job, but I can do it. I've lost my business, oh, but God, I can do it because you can provide an, an alternative for me. 
Oh, I'm about to lose my mind. But God, I can do it in Christ who can strengthen me. I can do it. I want every son and every daughter of God this Christmas to say, I can do it. Because this is what God will want us to have for Christmas. The theme for this Christmas is experiencing Christmas. What is Christmas if we can't experience God? What is Christmas if we go through Christmas as if we can't do it? We have no hope. We have no future. We don't even know how to step into the new year. That is not Christmas. A great Christmas is a Christmas. Say, I can do it. it. It's a storm, but I can do it. I will call out to God. I keep rolling, rowing. I will roll through the storm. Because every storm has a short lifespan. If you believe that you can do it, stand up where you are, even if you're at home. If you believe that you can do it, you just stand up where you are. I want to pray that a new spirit will come upon every son and every daughter of God today. I want to pray that a new spirit will come upon, upon you, especially if you feel that you, are, you have been discouraged. Yes, it is hurting, it is painful, it is not a good feeling. It is not wrong. It is not a shameful thing to have needs. Every one of us, we have needs. Come before God and say, Lord, I have my needs, but I can do it because of what I have heard, because of what I have learned, because of what I have received, because of what I have seen, and because of the testimonies in the past. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, I can do it. Father God, let this be the message. Let this be the spirit of every son and every daughter of yours who are listening right now. That everyone would cry out to you and say, Lord, I can do it. The enemy may, sh- may cry at us and may laugh at us and may challenge us and say, Hey, where is your God? I will turn around to them and say, my God is with me and I can do it. It may not work the way you are expecting, but I can do it. This is a spirit that God wants us to pick up. Oh, Father God, I pray. There's healing in our body, soul and spirit. Every son and every daughter. There's a healing of the spirit of the land, the soul of the land, and the body of the land, of our nation. We pray, Father God, that we learn fast so that the storm can be over fast. We pray. By your mercy, Lord, you shorten the days of this pandemic in Jesus' name. By your grace, Lord, you bring healing, deliverance, not only to our land, to our nation, but to the world. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Right now, I'm asking for every life, every son, every daughter of yours who are listening right now, the Lord, you impart a new spirit, a right spirit within each and every one of them. So that as from today, they will rise up strong and be proud that they have a God like you to be their God. And they can declare to the world, I can do it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God a big applause. Come on. Everybody give God a big applause. Everyone say, I can do it. I can do it. Say, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And Merry Christmas.